so hello everyone uh, uh, let's talk about our next lecture let's start it uh, and today we are going to talk about the DNA binding domains uh, what are DNA binding domains we have previously discussed that the transcription factors be it activators or repressors uh, they interact with the DNA and when they interact with the DNA they, they contain two types of domains one type is called as a DNA binding domain one domain and the second domain is called as activation domain so the DNA binding domain interacts with the DNA while activation domain interacts with certain other proteins so in order to uh, in order to interact with the DNA um, it's necessary that these proteins have a certain sequence of amino acids on these alpha helices or whatever domain of the protein is going to interact with the DNA so this domain must have a specific sequence of the amino acids so that in, it can interact with the specific sequence of nucleotides on the DNA so this specificity is necessary and generally uh, this interaction consists of non-covalent uh, interactions between the atoms of the amino acids which are found on this uh, domain of the protein and the atoms which are found on the edges of the nucleotides inside the DNA so uh, uh, sometimes uh, these interactions can also be uh, strengthened by the interaction uh, of the protein with the molecules on the uh, or with the atoms on the on this sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA Generally, these transcription factors or these uh, DNA binding domains, they interact with the uh, nucleotides in the major groove. But sometimes they also uh, have the ability to make some additional, uh, uh, additional bonds with the nucleotides in the minor groove. So these proteins are even capable of uh, binding the DNA without uh, opening it because uh, these proteins can read it uh, from the edges. Uh, there are different types of these uh, DNA binding motifs. They are generally divided into four uh, different uh, types. Uh, the first type is helix turn helix motif. Um, the second one is so we will also talk about the homeo domain motifs. This is a special class of helix turn helix proteins or helix turn helix uh, motifs or domains. Um, the second uh, type of domain that these uh, regulatory proteins can have is known as basic helix loop helix domain and the third one is uh, zinc finger motif and the fourth one is leucine zipper uh, motif we are talking about the DNA binding domains and not the activation domain so this is the DNA binding domain and this is the activation domain we are exclusively uh, concerned about uh, the DNA binding domains here and these DNA binding domains can be of four different types helix turn helix motif basic helix loop helix zinc finger motif and leucine zipper uh, motif we, we, we will study uh, about these motifs uh, one by one in our uh, next lecture today we are going to talk about some general stuff about the uh, DNA binding domains uh, let's look at this slide so what you see here this is a double helical structure of the DNA um, what you see here uh, is the uh, sugar phosphate backbone indicated in blue and inside what you see these are the uh, nucleotides of the DNA this is the minor groove of the DNA and this is the major groove of the, of the DNA we have previously discussed that uh, the regulatory proteins they generally interact with the uh, proteins uh, sorry with the uh, with the nucleotides in the major groove of the DNA but they do have the ability to make some additional bonds with the sugar phosphate backbone or with some uh, nucleotides in the minor group but generally most of them are going to interact with the uh, nitrogenous bases or nucleotides inside the uh, major groove so this sugar phosphate backbone on the periphery has got a certain uh, pattern and that pattern is developed uh, because uh, uh, each uh, base pair is exposed at the surface of the double helix which, 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 which presents a distinctive pattern 
of hydrogen uh, donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, and sometimes hydrophobic patches. We will talk about these three different things uh, in the next slide. Uh, so what you need to understand here is that three types of main interactions or three types of uh, m uh, these uh, uh, things are available here like hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, and hydrophobic uh, patches or hydrophobic molecules. Uh, molecules that, that, that help in hydrophobic interactions. Uh, we will look at them one by one and these three types of interactions are basically uh, involved in the interaction of these transcription factors with the uh, DNA. Let's look at the structure of the DNA first. Uh, as you can see here this is the minor groove of the DNA and this is the major groove of the DNA. Um, and proteins can generally interact, these, these proteins can generally interact with the um, with the nucleotides in the major groove of the DNA what you see here indicated in red and blue this is the sugar phosphate uh, uh, backbone and on the inside you have got uh, the nitrogen spaces A uh, uh, bonding with G and C bonding with G here's an elaborated structure of the DNA uh, let me get rid of this thing okay so what you see here in the middle, uh, these are your nitrogen spaces, these are your nucleotides, G interacting with uh, C and T interacting with A. And as you can see that um, A and T, they have got a double bond, so this is the hydrogen bond between A and B, a double hydrogen bond, and here in uh, G and C, between G and C, what you see is a triple bond, so these dots basically indicate the hydrogen bond. This is the hydrogen bond between uh, the nucleotides of, uh, of the two strands on the opposite side. And as we see here that each nucleotide on its side is again connected to a sugar molecule which should be a deoxyribose in this case because it's a DNA. And then one sugar molecule is connected to another sugar molecule. So these are two sugar molecules and they're connected to each other via a phosphate bond so this is the phosphate bond so the sugar molecules and the phosphate bonds they constitute together what we call a sugar phosphate backbone so in this case this would be the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA and this is indicated in green here this is the sugar phosphate backbone so the arrow also indicates the uh, direction of the nucleotides 5 prime to 3 prime uh, the, the, the strand and here's 5 prime to 3 prime sequence of the nucleotides on the strand uh, which is indicated in red and this sugar phosphate backbone is indicated in red here. So a protein, a regulatory protein which interacts with the DNA here is either going to interact with the nitrogen with the nitrogen spaces here so these nitrogen spaces can have certain atoms here and the proteins can interact with these atoms or the proteins can also interact with sometimes with this sugar phosphate backbone so uh, let's let's look at uh, four different uh, possible scenarios uh, how uh, how the nitrogen how the nucleotides appear these are four different possibilities of uh, pairs of uh, nucleotides inside the DNA. You can either have a, have a pair uh, GC or you can have CG. Another possibility is you can have AT or TA. So this is um, with respect to the major and minor grooves of the DNA. So what you see at the top is the major groove of the DNA and at the bottom what you see is the minor groove of the DNA. So uh, what you see that certain atoms on these uh, nucleotides they're indicated in blue and there are others which are indicated in red so blue means this is the uh, the hydrogen donor bond so this is going to constitute a bond where hydrogen would be donated to the protein and what is indicated in red so it means this is a hydrogen acceptor so this is going to accept another uh, hydrogen atom from the protein or it means that this would go this would interact with the protein which would have a hydrogen here when it uh, penetrates in the, into the major groove the protein needs to have a hydrogen atom here which would make up a bond with the oxygen here 
and in this scenario something else another molecule here where uh, nitrogen would interact with this uh, protein via donating this hydrogen so uh, as you can see uh, G and C and C and G they are mirror images of each other hence the hydrogen atom here is flipped to the other side from left to the right side and the same is true for this this hydrogen atom from the left side to the right side nothing uh, nothing very special so it's uh, pretty simple the same uh, let's look at A and T here so they're also mirror images of each other these two figures uh, either you can have uh, if, if if you're talking about uh, the uh, edges of the, of the of the of the DNA in the middle you have got this uh, nitrogen spaces and on the periphery you have got this is the sugar molecule and then here you might have a, a phosphate molecule in order to interact with another uh, with another sugar molecule. So this is a mirror image, A and T and T and A. As you can see, hydrogen is flipped to the right, and then methyl group is flipped to the left. So uh, what is indicated in blue is a hydrogen is a hydrogen donor, and what is indicated in red is a hydrogen acceptor. acceptor. But uh, what else do we see here is a methyl group which is indicated in yellow. So this indicates that this uh, methyl group is going to this methyl group is going to participate in uh, in hydrophobic interactions. So uh, these three types of interactions are generally involved: uh, hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, and these hydrophobic patches. So basically, they they are involved in strengthening the already existing uh, bond between the protein and the uh, DNA. So how would a protein interact with this sequence? We will talk about uh, the adenine. How would an amino acid on the surface of the protein which enters into the major groove here, how would this adenine interact with the amino acids of the protein? Let's look at it in details on the next slide. So here is thiamine and adenine. It's the same picture, and um, as you can see, these are two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thiamine. And as we have uh, seen on the previous slide, that this was a hydrogen donor, and this was a hydrogen acceptor. As you can see here, this is a DNA binding protein, and this has entered into the major group now. Now this protein is going to have. Uh, uh, this protein is going to have. Uh, can write it here a sequence of amino acids so here it has got an aspergine and then maybe uh, ah, it doesn't write anyways so uh, an aspergine here and then maybe a glycine here and then leucine and then isoleucine and then proline and so on so that would be the sequence of the amino acids and the same way your DNA is also going to have a sequence like aspergine thiamine glycine and then again glycine ATT, GTT, CT and so on. So uh, the sequence of uh, the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA must match the sequence of amino acids on the protein. So if this if either of these two sequences is not complementary to each other the protein may not be able to interact with this uh, with the DNA in this region. So how would uh, each amino acid interact with the uh, with the uh, with the nucleotide in the DNA, so these um, this is a uh, this is the aspergine. This one amino acid, and it has got uh, a hydrogen donor here and a hydrogen acceptor here. And here we had a hydrogen donor, and here we have an hyd uh, a hydrogen acceptor. So this hydrogen bond basically develops between the amino acid of the protein and the nucleotide of the DNA. And this, and once again, if you have another amino acid here, this is going to interact with another nucleotide, and then another amino acid, third amino acid, going to interact with third amino acid, and fourth with the third nucleotide, and fourth amino acid with the fourth nucleotide. So if something goes wrong with the sequence, either in the either in the protein or in the DNA, so uh, this uh, compatibility would be lost, and uh, the interaction may not uh, take place. Okay, so I think uh, that is sufficient for today, and we will discuss in details about the different types of uh, DNA binding uh, motifs in our next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.